All right, so we've explored using 3D assets inside of the engine and even how to obtain some really high quality assets with Quixel Megascans. Layout artist is a very popular job in the industry right now, but 3D assets can come from anywhere. Creating 3D assets is a job in and of itself. In the modeling, texturing, and rendering triangle, Unreal acts as the renderer. Now, if you're a 3D artist like me, then you've probably been wanting to get your own work into the engine. Maybe you have a friend or a colleague who's a 3D artist, or maybe you've downloaded a model from an online marketplace. Either way, getting art assets into Unreal is actually pretty easy. Let's have a look. All right, if you've downloaded the file for the Ginny Lynn trunk and unzipped it, you should see two folders inside of that. There's gonna be model, which is going to have the actual models themselves, and a textures folder, which has the textures for it. Now, I'm going to pop this back over to the side here on my other monitor, and what we're gonna do inside of Unreal is here under my stuff, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to call this import demo. Then go inside of this folder. Now in this folder, there are a couple of different ways that we can import. We can actually right click in here and go up to import. And this is going to give us a browser to navigate to our folder where we unzipped everything. We could also go over here to this import button which is going to give us the same thing. But I find that the easiest way to import something into Unreal is actually to just drag and drop it. So if I bring my Explorer window over here, or if you're on a Mac, you would bring your Finder window over. And I'm just gonna go into this Models folder and then drag and drop this right here like that. Now I'll move this back on the side. And this is our FBX import options here. Now an FBX file is a type of 3D model. Uh, technically what the FBX file format is, it is a container file that can contain models, it can contain materials, textures, uh, animations, all sorts of things in it that it can contain. But for this matter here, this particular FBX file, the trunks FBX, contains two models inside of it. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to import both of those models to Unreal. It's gonna be just like in our starter content or uh, anything that we downloaded from Megascans, but these are custom models. So with that in mind, let's look at our FBX import options here. Now there are a few things that we need to be aware of. Right off the bat, up at the top, we see this mesh category. There's an option for skeletal mesh. Now this is going to pertain to a rigged mesh, so like a character or anything that has a rigged skeleton to it. In this case, we're importing a prop, so it is not a rigged mesh. It does not have a skeleton, so this is going to be unchecked. Now what's really cool is most of the time you don't have to pay much attention to this right here because Unreal will automatically detect if your model has a skeleton or not and will automatically check this if it is a skeletal mesh. But for this here, we don't need it checked. Next up, we'll see this build nanite. Now nanite is a new function inside of Unreal. We have a whole video that goes over what that is when to use it, when not to use it, why to use it, all of that. Now, if you're used to working on Unreal Engine 4, then you might be familiar with the LOD system, the level of detail, or maybe you've heard that from another game engine. Nanite is Unreal Engine 5's new version of level of detail. So we do actually wanna build this even if we don't plan on using it because if we want to change something over to use it later, if we didn't originally import it with this build Nanite turn on, it is a little bit cumbersome to re-import it and have it rebuilt. So let's go ahead and turn this on right here. Uh, this right here, generate missing collision. This basically means that Unreal is going to automatically create collision for your meshes. Now, if you're working in film related stuff, this is not going to matter too much for you. If you're working in game, then this is going to be a magic bullet for you, unless it's a super complex object where you need to build custom collision. Either way, if you don't need it, it's better to turn it off later. So we'll go ahead and leave this turned on. A lot of the other options in here, you can leave at your default. 
Uh, one important thing I want to point out is the import uniform scale. This right here, we do want to leave it at one. And if something just seems messed up when you import it, it's not the right size, then it is best to identify that on the export side rather than the import side. So say for example, you modeled something in the units of meters, instead of having your modeling package set to centimeters, it might be tempting to come in here and set this value to 0.1. You want to avoid doing that. That, especially if you're in a production environment, you want to identify those scaling issues on the modeling side before they get to Unreal. All right, next up, we'll leave these guys as default and then down here in material, it has the capability of creating a new material for your mesh based on what is in there and then setting that up and importing textures and all of that. And now working in production in both the game industry and the film industry, I have found that 99 times out of 100, this is not going to do what you want it to. And especially if you are working within a pipeline that already exists, then you're probably dealing with master materials and stuff like that. So. Really, you want to turn this off. So what I do here is material import method. We'll just click on this and we're gonna go down to do not create materials. And then also I'm going to turn off import textures because we're gonna do that manually, especially considering that most of the time your actual PBR textures are not going to be tied to your models and your FBX. So we're gonna be importing those separately. Now, once you change all of these settings, it's going to keep these, it's gonna save these. So the next time you import a model, it's gonna build Nanite, it's not gonna create materials and it's not going to import textures. All right, so now we can come down here and we can click on this import button and you'll see that it is now imported two models. And that's because this FBX file contained two models. There was the closed version of this trunk right here. If I double click this one, there is the open version. Now these both use the same material, the same textures. So for here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down and right click, go up to material. It's gonna name this M underscore Jenny Lend trunk and then go in here and apply this. So remember we can drag and drop this on here or we can, with it selected in our content browser, we can come up here and click this little arrow right here to assign it. Now, right now it's all black. It's because it's got nothing going on. Go ahead and open this up. And then the next thing that I wanna do is I'm going to import the textures. Same thing. We're gonna come back over here. I'm gonna go up a level into the textures folder. I like to just drag and drop these things in. So you can drag and bring them all in at once, but there's something very specific that I wanted to show you. So if I were to drag this base color in, now we see that it's imported. We can see it right there. If I were to drag this normal map in, we can see a little pop-up that says texture was imported as normal map. We'll hit okay on that. That is something really cool that Unreal automatically does is if you have a normal map that has your traditional normal map colors in it, Unreal is able to read that and automatically set it to a normal map in the compression settings. Now, why is that important? Well, that's because the compression settings determine a lot about a texture. And we're gonna look at that with the third texture in here, which is the Occlusion Roughness Metallic Map, or the ORM. If I were to just drag this into here like this, there we go, get this guy out of the way. Now, this right here is one of those instances where we are going to be using individual channels from this. So if we look at the red channel, this is our ambient occlusion. The green channel is going to be our roughness. And then the blue channel is actually going to be our metallic map where we can see the black areas are things that are not metallic like the wood or the leather. And the white areas are things that are metallic like the brass. Now something to keep in mind with these textures is that these textures go through a process called gamma correction. Now, what that means is that in gamma correction, it takes the compiled RGB of the image and then it 
gamma corrects it to the sRGB color space. Now, if we want to use individual channels of this texture, that gamma correction, that changing it to the sRGB color space is going to mess up those individual channel values so we can't use them in the way that we want to. So whenever we're working with a texture that we plan on using individual channels, we need to turn that off. Now there are a couple of different ways that we can do that. Over here in the details panel, we come down here to texture, we see this SRGB and a checkbox. We can actually uncheck this and it'll turn off that gamma correction. Now you may not notice a difference when looking at it, but that difference is there and it is enough to make a difference in your individual channels. But I will turn this back on and the preferred way to do this is to actually change your compression settings. So if we go up here under compression, we see compression settings and we see by default it is set to default. Just like if we were to come over here and open the normal map, we can see that the compression setting is set to normal map. Well, for this guy, what we want to do is we want to set the compression settings to masks. And what the masks means is it means that you are intending to use the individual RGB channels and not the combined RGB color. So we will change it to this. We'll see that it changes the sRGB to off. There's a couple other things that happen, uh, but this is going to work for us for now. So go ahead and save this. And then we can go back into our material and I'm just going to drag each one of these in just like that. And then something else that we can do really cool in the material editor is over here in our viewport. If we were to come down and select this static mesh down here, the open version of this, I can actually come up here to the viewport in the material editor and click on this little cinder block looking icon which is going to tell it to use the mesh that I have selected in the content browser in the preview. So now this makes it a little bit easier to work with this material in here. All right, so with that, what I'm gonna do now is come over here, I'm going to plug in my RGB from the base color, I'm going to plug in the RGB for the normal, and then we can see over here that we now have these textures on this. If I start working with my masks, if we remember the O for ambient occlusion, we'll drag off of the R, O and R, to the ambient occlusion. And then green is the roughness, the R. So we'll drag that off and bring it into roughness. And now we can see some things going on over here. We can see that we've got a little bit of shininess here and there. Uh, but we also have metal and non-metal parts to this which are stored in the metalness map in the blue channel. So we'll drag off of this, plug it into metallic, and now there we go. Our metallic pieces are metal, our non-metallic pieces are not metal. And go ahead and hit apply. And then if we look down here, we can see that both of these, since they have the same material and they're using the same textures, the same UVs, both of them are now all set up and good to go. So that is how you import a custom asset. You import the models, you import the textures, you create the material, you assign the material, and then from there, you should be good to go. All right, now you know how to import custom 3D models and textures. If you're a 3D artist yourself, you now have the power to render your work inside of Unreal. This can actually be a replacement renderer for things like Marmoset Toolbag for getting your work up on your portfolio. Now, if you're more attuned to the layout artist route, then this can help you when working with other artists on a project. Either way, you have the power.